I'm Robin Murdoch live on the city's west side where there's a makeshift memorial behind me following a deadly double shooting that took the life of a popular panhandler out here. What happened and how that double amputee is being remembered this morning in my live report. Good morning, Amy. Good morning, Robin. It's been a frightening morning for people living on Detroit's west side. What we're learning after five people had to be rescued from their burning home. The latest just ahead. Brandon. Amy, from fire to ice, if you have been out this morning, you already know. Metro Detroit is getting a blast of snow. They got it earlier today. Just enough for a slow go on many local roadways. Derek Kevra will join us with a forecast in just a few moments. Working for you. Fox 2 News Live at 11 starts now. How was your drive this morning? It wasn't too bad. It was really, you know, melting right. and more just wet than anything. So not too we bad. We were fortunate because we didn't have to get up too early. That's right. But a lot of people, I'm sure they had to go through it. And we're going to get to Derek on why this is just the beginning of what is to come. Yes. But first, good morning. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brandon Hudson. And I'm Amy Lang. And we begin with this well-known panhandler just not too far from the station and a driver both killed during a fight over a gun. And so the situation unfolded yesterday afternoon in the area of 8 Mile and Southfield Service Drive. Fox News' Robin Murdoch is live on Detroit's West Side. More Robin, sadly, this is not the panhandler's first brush with gun violence. You know, uh, you are right about that, Brandon. Over the summer, he was actually grazed by a bullet in the neck in the same area. This time, unfortunately, though, the 64-year-old double amputee did not survive. But you can see that there is a memorial behind me. It's actually blocked by one of those cars right now. But there is a makeshift memorial behind me that shows exactly how much he meant to this community. Insane. <laughs> we all pass him. He's been here for years, didn't bother anyone. An empty wheelchair in the middle of a deadly double shooting scene near 8 Mile in the Southfield on the city's west side. The first hint that we may know one of the men killed, a popular panhandler who parked himself here nearly every single day. He was very respectful and very grateful for the things that we gave him. You know, I, said, I see him all the time. This is my, my route. So you know, he was a good guy. You know, he speak kind to people. So I don't understand. You watched the news last night? I, I was the one. We first introduced you to 64-year-old Clayton Willis, a double amputee in late July. When he was grazed by a bullet in this very area, he was among a handful of panhandlers shot at or threatened over the summer. On Wednesday, Willis was struck again but did not survive. The homicide will be working to determine what the motive was for this altercation, if they're known to each other, or if there's any other factors that were involved. According to this deputy chief, Willis got into an argument with the driver of a black charger just before 2.30 in the afternoon. A single shot was fired. That resulted in a physical fight over that gun. Then more gunfire with bullets eventually striking and killing them both. What sounds is they pulled up and shot at him and somehow there was a struggle. I don't know. I don't know what that was about, but I mean, the two lives are lost for nothing. This memorial now sits in the same spot where Willis, who lost both his legs to frostbite in 2000 and had use of only one arm due to a stroke, died. The veteran who served his country but then came upon hard times, now remembered by many. This interview with him just six months ago, an eerie reminder of how dangerous it can be out here. Jesus watches me. I pray every time I come out here. Yeah, just a very sad situation. Now, police did tell us that they did recover a gun, but they have not said who that gun belonged to. They have not, also not shared very much information about the other man who was killed in this situation. Again, they are continuing to investigate to see if this shooting was connected to the one in July in any way. So, of course, when we know more about that, we'll be sure to let you know as well. For now, we are live on the city's west side. I'm Robin Murdoch for Fox 2 News. Yeah, Robin, those words from his last interview are enough to give you goosebumps here. But what can the public do going forward to help with this investigation? 
Yeah, you know, it is very eerie, Brandon, because a lot of people did know him, a lot of us at Fox 2. Uh, concerning what uh, people can do concerning this to help police, obviously they are going to be looking at surveillance video so they can try and see what exactly led up to the shooting. But if you happen to be out here, if you saw something, if you heard something that might be beneficial to police, they would obviously like to talk to you. And of course, if you know anything about that shooting that happened over the summer in July, uh, they'd like to know, they'd like to talk to you as well. Uh, so certainly a lot more uh, to go on this story. And of course, we'll keep you posted. Back to you, Brandon. Two lives lost over something so unfortunate. Robin, we do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Amy. Police in Lansing looking for a man who intentionally hit an officer with his car and then took off. 30-year-old Zachary Dooling is wanted out of Jackson County on a probation violation and for fleeing from officers several days ago. Well, police in Lansing spotted his car last night, and they say he struck an officer during an attempted traffic stop. The officer opened fire, hitting the vehicle, but Dooling kept driving. The officer's hospitalized, but okay. The car is a 2014 Chevy Cruze with a Michigan plate number EBW. 5891. If you see dueling or his car, call 911. And a Michigan State Trooper. I'll take this trooper. one. Sorry, right. Michigan State Trooper is recovering this morning after a 16 year old driver slams into his cruiser. And this happened on northbound I 75 near Sasha Ball Road in Oakland County. The trooper was in the middle of the traffic stop arresting a suspected drunk driver. He was belted, he was has just belted the man in the front seat of the cruiser when the teenager in a Dodge Durango crashed into them. Amazingly, the trooper and the other man only suffered minor injuries. The 16-year-old driver was not hurt. And in Royal Oak, a serious crash involves a pedestrian. You can see the aftermath here at the intersection. This is 11 Mile in Woodward last night. We were working to find out how the person is doing. Oakland County Sheriff's deputies are working this case. Let's get to a tense Situation overnight on the Southfield Freeway at 8 Mile. Check this out. It's a car dangling off of an overpass. So far, it is not clear what caused the driver to lose control. Crews pulled it back up on the roadway. Roadway is back open. No injuries were reported. Well, you have to wonder if any weather was involved in that, right? A snowy start to the morning today. This is a look at conditions earlier from Oak Park. The mix of snow and rain making for a slow go for drivers on some roadways. It's a preview of what we're hearing is on the way. How picturesque is that? You got the kids getting on the, the bus, the bus. driver getting the snow off of the front of that car. Look, we woke up this morning, looked out the window. We saw snow. Just know it is the beginning of what we're going to see heading into the end of this week. And getting some cooler temps out there, too, as we move into the weekend. Weather Later 30, Derek Kevra here with a quick forecast. Hi, Derek. Hey, guys. A snowy, slushy, potentially icy start to the day today with temperatures briefly dropping down below freezing. We have now gotten above that at 36. Winds blowing around 12 miles an hour. You're looking live up north. Houghton Lake right now. A lot of snow on the ground. A good blast of snow, about an inch there. Now, temperatures have been starting to rise a little bit. So as we head into the afternoon, we could see things potentially mixing with a few raindrops. But as we head through the end of the week, we're going to see another round of snow, potentially more rain, and then some icier conditions as those temperatures drop down well below freezing, taking us through the end of the weekend. Here's Fox Future Cast. Let's roll this into motion. A couple of flurries still lingering. Now, there's your temperatures above freezing, and you're looking at maybe a little bit of a mix, some of that green color showing up. Overall, though, most of the snow coming to an end for today, but heading back into Friday, boy, oh, boy, do things change pretty darn quick as more snow makes its way in, and a lot of big snow for areas off to the north. You'll see from Mount Pleasant and north, you're talking double digit numbers there and over a foot possible for spots near Ludington. Our numbers are a little bit lower and the reason for that is because we're going to get some rain mixing in. So that rain, a big part of the forecast as we head into the weekend. We're going to talk about that timeline for some showers. 38 today, but then as we move into the weekend, we're talking numbers falling down into the teens for highs, single digits for lows, and ice is going to be a problem. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. Amy, back over to you. New this morning, five people escaping a house fire on Detroit's west side. Crews responding to the scene on Artesian near Joy in the Southfield Freeway. That was around one this morning. The flames quickly spreading from one home to one next door. And thankfully, some alert neighbors were able to help everybody get out. When I looked out, the flames were jumping out of their upstairs window. And so I called the fire department immediately. 
and then I got my hammer because they, I heard people say they couldn't get out the house. So I was going to try to force their door to, you know, to help anyone next door that might be caught inside. When they worried about the crib because they got to have a place to live at, got to have a place to live for surely, but it could be replaced. Thank goodness for good neighbors mm -hmm. who step up fast. Neighbors tell us one of the kids did suffer some burns and the cause of that fire not yet known. All right, I want you to, in a minute, check out the fire from a Macomb County Sheriff's Office, or Macomb County, I should say. Sheriff's Office shares a dramatic body camera video of a rescue during a house fire yesterday morning. Deputies uh, ran into the burning home to save a man and his daughter from their home on Leanna Drive near 21 Mile. A 42-year-old daughter was able to make it out, out on her own. Her 74-year-old dad, overweight and disabled, was unable to move, but deputies carried him out. Preliminary investigation that he may have been sitting in the chair, fell asleep in a cigarette ignited uh, clothing and or a blanket. Proud of your people? Extremely proud. A great day. So the man suffered burns. He is currently hospitalized and is in stable condition. And coming up, a Detroit rapper under arrest and facing charges in the death of his estranged wife. She is a well-known advocate for domestic violence survivors. What we're learning about the charges he now faces, that's just ahead. It was the final Republican debate before the Iowa caucus. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley went head-to-head -head in search of support for more voters. More on what turned into a war of words. Well, Fox 2 is following some breaking sports news this morning, and if you are a coach looking for a job, there are a couple of openings. The first one, uh, head coach Bill Belichick, there are reports that he is leaving the New England Patriots. The move marks the end of a dynasty in the NFL. Belichick has been with the team for 24 years, has led players to six Super Bowl championships. The 71-year-old just became the third coach in NFL history to reach 300 career regular season wins earlier this season, but the Patriots ended this season and four and 13 Belichick's worst record in 29 seasons as a head coach a news conference about his pending move is scheduled for later today and another major coaching change Belichick's friend Nick Saban is rolling on and retiring as head coach at Alabama his resume includes seven national championships six with the Crimson Tide one at LSU he also spent five years as head coach at Michigan State Saban's Alabama teammate made the college playoffs, or his, his team made the playoffs this year, but they were beaten by Michigan in the Rose Bowl. Saban's retirement leaves a huge opening in Tuscaloosa. And turning to politics, last night, Republican candidates Nikki Haley and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis squaring off in a debate on CNN, the pair taking aim at each other and former President Donald Trump. Fox's Ted Lindner takes a closer look. Nikki Haley's running to pursue her donors' issues. I'm running to pursue your issues. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley showing down in Des Moines Wednesday night for a CNN debate. We have watched our country be in disarray. We see the world on fire, and we need someone who's had executive experience. Both candidates taking aim at former President Donald Trump, who skipped the debate to appear in a town hall on the Fox News Channel instead. For me, it's very much about no drama, no whining, and getting results and getting them done. He said he was going to build a wall and have Mexico pay for it. He did not deliver that. He said he was going to eliminate the debt, and he added $7.8 trillion to the debt. When it comes to reducing inflation and addressing the national debt, Haley said it's time for an accountant to be in the White House, while DeSantis touted energy independence. We're going to eliminate the federal gas and diesel tax in this country and cut taxes on the middle class and simplify those brackets. Energy independence isn't even, it's not, it's good for consumers. It's good to reduce inflation. Border security also a huge issue. Biden's let in 8 million people just in four years. They all have to go back. We need to defund sanctuary cities once and for all. No more safe havens for illegal immigrants. Meanwhile, former President Donald Trump remains the frontrunner for the Republican presidential nomination. In a town hall on the Fox News Channel, he said, I have polls that show me leading by a tremendous amount in New Hampshire and a lot in Iowa and nationwide were leading by almost 60 points. So I'm not exactly worried. The Iowa Republican caucuses will be held January 15th. Ted Lindner, Fox News. 
Meanwhile, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie has officially dropped out of the race. He was a long shot for the nomination and a former Donald Trump ally turned critic. He says he's still committed to making sure Trump does not return to the White House, but he has not yet endorsed another candidate. Well, turning now to the race for the soon-to-be open seat, Senate seat here in Michigan, Democrat Debbie... Oh. Yeah, well, Democrat Debbie Stabenow, as you know, she'll yeah. be leaving. She's not going to run for re-election. In a Detroit News poll showing Representative Alyssa Slotkin, the early favorite for the Democrats. But take a look at how she's doing against a key Republican candidate. It shows her trailing Republican and former Detroit Police Chief James Craig by two points. That is, of course, within the margin of error. 27% say they're undecided. Craig is the only Republican who's leading Slotkin in any potential head-to-head -head matchup right now. The poll also shows that other Democrats in the race, like Hill Harper, Nasser Baydoun, and others, are lacking in name recognition among people across the state. In New York, police are investigating a bomb threat that was called in today at the home belonging to the judge hearing former President Donald Trump's civil business fraud trial. Closing arguments in the case are still scheduled to resume this morning. Yesterday, the judge agreed to let Mr. Trump give a statement, but said it had to be related to the case and not a campaign speech. Trump did not agree to the terms, so it's unclear if he will speak during these closing arguments. The judge has already ruled the Trump organization lied about the value of properties to score better terms on loans. The trial is to determine financial penalties. Trump denies any wrongdoing. Also happening, Hunter Biden due in federal court in California to be arraigned on tax charges for allegedly failing to pay the IRS for several years. Yesterday, the president's son was on Capitol Hill for another potential legal matter. The House Oversight Committee held a vote on pursuing contempt charges after Hunter Biden refused to testify behind closed doors. He did offer to testify publicly. Hunter Biden did not stay the entire hearing, and the committee did pass the contempt resolution. Now the full House will vote. It'll be up to the Department of Justice to decide decide whether to prosecute Hunter Biden on those charges. Could have lost my life and my family's life could have been lost. It is dramatic. For the first time, we hear from the Highland Park father who helped his wife and daughters escape a fire, how you can help his family, and the critical changes two fire departments are making. A Detroit rapper is facing charges in connection with the murder of his estranged wife, Jimmy Kent Brown, known as rapper Supa MC, turned himself in. He is charged with first-degree murder and was denied bond. His estranged wife, 49-year-old Kelly Mays, was an advocate for victims of domestic violence. The couple had been living apart for about a year. And one week after a devastating fire in Highland Park, we are hearing from the father who helped his family escape the flames. Well, his family five lost everything after De Detroit fire chief is accused of making a controversial decision. If it wasn't for him, there was no way we would have got out of there. No way possible. As we sat down with Sharon Mayhawk and Brandon Lightsey, we saw their bond is stronger than the tragedy they survived last week in Highland Park. Sitting arm in arm, the couple relived the fire which destroyed their home. Lightsey jumped into action after his three-year-old daughter discovered flames in a bedroom. Nothing's working. And, and uh, at the same time, I'm panicking and I'm also um, in motion trying to figure out what's the next step. And the entire time, I'm just thinking about um, just, you know, us making it out of this alive. The way it happened, God was really, he was really there because his sister was asleep downstairs, him making noise, moving around. If him bumping around upstairs and us scrambling, that woke her up. That essentially saved her life as well. The couple says they and their three children, all under six years old, jumped out of a second floor window. Both of them have foot injuries. Brandon Lightsey needed emergency surgery. The family has a GoFundMe for assistance. On Wednesday, Highland Park's mayor and fire chief talked about getting the community to rally around this family. I just want the citizens to know that it would be greatly appreciated if they could come out and help with whatever they need so that they can restart their lives. So I think this it's like a life-changing situation mentally, physically for us, and it, I, I, feel like, I feel like it is bringing us closer together. Highland Park Fire Chief Eric Hollowell 
also talked about the changes made because of a controversial decision by a Detroit Fire Department chief to pull a crew from the fire despite responding to the scene first. Since Fox 2 brought you the story last week, the Highland Park chief and Detroit Fire Commissioner have met. He and I spoke about the mutual aid agreement that we have and been in place all these years. We're going to tweak it to fit our needs and make sure that this problem never, ever happens again. The crew, they, they, did, they did what they were told. My issue is not with the crew. My issue is with the Detroit Fire Chief for the way they handled that, that fire scene from the time we arrived. In Highland Park, Brandon Hudson, Fox 2 News. A bit of a messy start to the day today. A lot of snow out there in southeast Michigan, but this was just a quick system here. So a fast moving lighter system, inch of snow, that's it. How about several inches possible as we head into tomorrow evening and tomorrow night? We'll have a full timeline of what to expect as some rain moves in too. Well, new this morning, the Detroit Public Schools Community District is suffering from a food shortage. We are told that the district's main vendor, U.S. Foods, is experiencing a significant disruption in services as a result of a driver's strike. Now, don't worry. Students will still be fed both breakfast and lunch, but the number of menu choices will be temporarily reduced. Labor experts predict the strike will last at least two more weeks. And speaking of hunger and food insecurity, a Garden City woman and her husband, they've made a big difference for their community, opening a 24-hour food pantry. The response has been tremendous, and they're do not done yet. We got canned goods, uh, snacks. Ian Stewart just finished restocking the Elmwood Blessing Box, the 13-year-old visiting his older sister, whose family installed the Blessing Box in front of their Garden City home last April. A couple of minutes ago, someone came by and donated two heads of lettuce, granola bars, and two gallons of milk. We service about 50 to 60 people a day. Elizabeth Friedman knows the need all too well. She works for Section 8 Housing, but this food pantry is extra personal. I utilized food pantries and other community resources a lot um, before I met my husband, and it was so hard with two young children just getting the help you needed. So Elizabeth and her husband wanted to do something that would give more people more access to more things, food as well as diapers and hygiene products. There's people that are struggling that work long hours and they can't make the time constraints of a food pantry or um, other community resources. So we decided we were going to make this blessing box, which would be 24 hour full access for anybody to come at any point in time. And for people like Jennifer Osborne, a mom from Garden City, this blessing box has been exactly that. They've been a blessing. I have a, a six month old son. I ran out of formula. She had extra. Baby food, she has extra. Kids are out of school, she does little bags, you know, to help us why they're not in school, to feed them and stuff. She's been an amazing blessing. Jennifer says she donates when she can, and Elizabeth says some days there are dozens of packages on their front porch from their Amazon wish list. While she and her husband initially funded the food pantry by setting aside $50 from their paychecks each week, now it's the community helping them take care of each other. Once the community really understood what it was and what it was for, people started donating, just dropping off canned goods, dropping off whatever they could to fill the box. Soon they'll be starting a mobile food pantry to help people who don't have transportation. And the mobile pantry will be basically a small tiny house filled with shelves that we will transport to anybody that needs it and their whole community will be able to shop for two hours. And Elizabeth's family is embracing that old adage, it truly is better to give than to receive. It's been a great experience, it really has. If you need help or want to learn more, go to the Elmwood Blessing Box Facebook page. If you can help, well, we'll put the link to their Amazon wish list on our website at fox2detroit.com. In Garden City, Amy Lang, Fox 2 News. Great story, Amy. Good stuff.
A lot of good people out there. All right, let's take a live look outside here. Mount Clemens, the Clinton River. Some snow on the ground. We picked up about a half an inch to an inch in a lot of spots. Not a ton of it sticking to the roadways, especially if they were treated with salt. That tend to work pretty good. Temperatures were kind of in a key window there for, uh, uh, for the salt to work. System itself is moving through right now. Still a little bit of snow left, especially off to the north there. Lapeer and Genesee County is dealing with this little line right here of some snow. Uh, that all said, or Oakland County as well, seeing some snow still. Uh, that said, that's not the big system, guys. The big system is the one coming out of the Rockies right now. So it's traveling right here. It's unorganized at this point, but it will get organized and it'll do it in a hurry as it makes its way through parts of uh, Oklahoma, northern Texas, and then takes aim at us. Now you might look at that and go, that looks familiar. It does, because it was the same track too. Tuesday storm took. So there's Tuesday storm. And there's Friday storm right on top of it. Now, a few differences. No two storms are quite alike, but this one does have a lot of similarities. The difference is going to be this cold air, and it's a bit colder in the atmosphere this time than last time back out to our north and to our west. However, it is still mild uh, to our east and specifically over Lake Erie. So temperatures, the water temperatures of Lake Erie right now are 37, 39 degrees. It's barely frozen. Now, that plays a big role in things because this reason, as the wind kind of circles around low pressure systems, and grabs that warmer air and that pushed it into Michigan. That's what happened Tuesday. I think that's going to happen again as we move into Friday. Check this out as we run Fox Futurecast. So today, a few lingering snow flurries. Then we're going to call it for cloudy conditions. We wake up tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. There's not going to be snow on the ground. I don't want you waking up Friday and going, oh boy, those guys were wrong again. It's not Friday morning. It's Friday afternoon, so there's 6 a.m., nothing. By the afternoon, it starts moving in 1230, so it's still just down to the south, although some of it may be a little bit over to our west. Now it starts lifting up right in time for the commute. That's not a good time. Driving home between 2 and 6 o'clock, it is going to be snowy, but then there comes that warmer air. Look at that, changing some of that snow over into rain. So by Friday night, we could see a large window here of rain before the warm air loses, the cold air wins. That happens early Saturday morning. Could mean a little bit more snow, but our key window for a accumulation is going to be Friday afternoon, late afternoon, Friday evening, Friday night might be mostly rain. So because of that, a lot of us are going to be right there in that two to five inch zone. Could be four to seven, you know, a little bit more to the north and to the west. Big numbers off to the north. This is a spot that doesn't see any rain. So it's all snow. And they're talking like 12 inches a foot of snow for a lot of northern Michigan. But again, the devil's in the details, right? So here's the start time about 2 p.m. Rain mixing in Friday night. Depending on how far west that rain and warm air pushes, that's going to put you on one of these ends here of the limit. So two is smaller end with more rain. Eight is on the higher end. Uh, but uh, that could exist for spots around Howell and Livingston County. Even Lansing is starting to trend up a little bit. So about eight inches of uh, snow for Lansing. Here's the spot that sees no rain. And that's a lot of snow up there, about 15 inches for Sheboygan. Uh, for a lot of southeast Michigan, though, you've seen those numbers at threes and fours and five inches. So it's lower, which can be attributed to the same type of weather pattern, which is milder air. You see those numbers, milder air not lasting too much longer as we head towards the end of the weekend, Lions fans need to know, 17 cold degrees. Mm. That's the high temperature. Yes. So you're going to be uh, tailgating in some cold weather before you get into Ford Field. Yeah, my son texted this morning, like, 10 degree tailgate. This is going to be like, whoa, that's all you, babe. I'm going to be sitting in front of the fire watching the game because right. I'm not doing that. Before the season, if someone said, we'll be in the playoffs, but it'll be 10 degrees, you say yes every People time. Right? It out. Yeah. People would have taken it 100%. You say it every time. All day long. Right. I'm just going to not be but able to you, <laughs> you, could, I mean, you could just show up right before the doors open. So that'd be good. You don't have to tailgate. You just show up right before the doors open. There you go. There you go. Thanks, Derek. All right, All right. we'll be right back. <laughs> Fox News following some breaking news right now. A big announcement is being made that will impact the future of the Selfridge Air National Guard base. A new squadron of refueling tankers is on the way to the base, which is something Senator Gary Peters and a local delegation have been working on for quite some time. And Michigan Senator Gary Peters joins us now live with more on this announcement. Good morning. Please tell us what's happening. Uh, is the new state-of-the-art aircraft that's being deployed. And today we learned that uh, our, uh, our aging aircraft are gonna be replaced 
uh, by this new KC-46. And not just replaced one-to-one, -one, we currently have a squadron of eight tankers uh, at, uh, at Selfridge. The new squadron will be 12 aircraft. That also means a larger number of personnel that will be working there. Uh, and the important thing is that this is the state-of-the-art aircraft that the, Air, that the Air Force uh, intends to continue to use perhaps for the next 50 years to refuel uh, aircraft. So this is a long-term mission uh, for Selfridge. Uh, and it's uh, interesting, this is the first new aircraft platform from the Air Force that we have received in Michigan, probably really literally in decades. So this is uh, great to have this state of the aircraft coming soon to Selfridge Air National Guard Base. Oh, well, Senator Peach, this has been a big deal because for a while there, uh, things were very uncertain out at Selfridge. Give us a brief history here because this uh, did not look to be a sure thing at all. No, uh, this uh, this did not. Uh, we're, we're looking. We have two uh, squadrons of aircraft: a fighter aircraft. We get that fighter mission. But we also knew the 135s were going away, so we needed to secure that. And that's what happened uh, today. Uh, and what got me uh, real concerned uh, is that these aircraft that they're being were being assigned to different bases around the country. And there were only two squadrons left that were not assigned. And I know if, uh, there were roughly 10 states aggressively competing for the two squadrons that were left of the KC-46. And today, Secretary Kendall informed us uh, that we're getting uh, one of those uh, in Michigan, uh, which is uh, very good news. So that means the other nine states now have to compete for the remaining squadron, but we have ours. Well, you made it happen, and I'm sure that all of the people who depend on Selfridge, whether or not you work there, you certainly live in that area, and our state in general. I mean, everyone uh, benefits from this for sure. Absolutely. Selfridge has a, a big economic uh, impact, not just in Macomb County, but the whole state. And it's important to remember that Selfridge uh, uh, has more than these aircraft. It's also uh, the place where the U.S. Coast Guard flies their helicopters. It's their air station. It's the Department of Homeland Security has facilities there. I served many years in the U.S. Navy Reserve uh, there at Selfridge. The U.S. Navy has facilities, uh, including the Marine Corps and the Army. So we uh, have a wonderful facility at Selfridge. But now with this aircraft that has a 50 year life and represents the state of the art refueler for the Air Force, Selfridge is even in a more secure position now. Well, congratulations. Thank you for your hard work making that happen for us. Senator Gary Peters, we so appreciate you joining us for Live at 11. Well, Lee, what's coming up on the noon? Thank you so much, Amy. Let's talk about what's coming up on the noon. The latest on Simone Biles, and she has a big new Vanity Fair cover uh, as this Olympic gymnast opens up about the most important thing that's ever happened in her life, and it's not the Olympics. Also, we'll talk about 2024's best diets. They've been named, and it seems to be one particular diet that continues to top the list. We'll help you come through with your New Year's resolution. Those stories, plus, we'll show you our own Mario Lu on a national show, Dish Nation. That's coming up on the noon. Michigan fans, today you can get an up-close look at the University of Michigan's shiny new college football championship trophy. It'll be on display at the Meyer on Carpenter Road in Ypsilanti. That's today until 2. Meanwhile, a parade will take place in Ann Arbor on Saturday to celebrate the team's victory. The parade begins at 4 p.m. Fans are encouraged to line up along South University and State Street with plans to end at Schembechler Hall. At 7 p.m., a celebration will take place at Chrysler Center. Tickets will first be offered to season ticket holders and donors today, and the remaining tickets will be offered to the public on Friday. Meanwhile, Michigan-based Kellogg's also celebrating the maize in blue with a special Fruit Loops box with Go Blue, B-L-O-O, -O, on the front of the box. <laughs> and the university's fight song lyrics printed on the side. The box costs $18.17, a nod to the university's founding in 1817. You can only buy them online. The company will not be printing more, so act fast if you want that cereal box. I think Amy enjoyed that a little too much, right? <laughs> yeah. So on the Fox Beat, it is time to head to Hollywood, get the latest headlines from Extra today. That includes the details. But the Netflix series, uh, Fool Me Once, which has become widely popular. But we also want to begin with news about Michael Strahan. And for more, we are joined by Extra's Billy Bush. Billy, how are you doing today? 
Brandon, I'm doing great. Michael Strahan is a great friend of mine. Play golf with him uh, at least once a month. Um, last month, it's been a couple of times, but I've known about this uh, for you know a few months, and it's been a very private, tough thing for Michael. And uh, you know, we've, we've all just watched him kind of soldier through this with his daughter, uh, Isabella, who's a freshman in college, and she's got medulla blastoma which is a form of brain cancer, and she has been an absolute trooper for the last, I don't know if you remember, but Michael was kind of missing off Good Morning America for a while and also Fox NFL Sunday. So yep. that's what he's been dealing with, and uh, I think he's super proud of his, I just, whew. Super proud of his daughter because, uh, you know, I still and Michael, you, <laughs> Nobody goes unscathed. Right. I don't, you know, what, what it is. We all are going to hit something. And Michael's got the most beautiful life. I mean, he's got great jobs and all this stuff. And he was the guy that did the St. Jude commercials. Uh, and then it comes knocking on his door. And his daughter has just really grabbed the bull by the horns. And she's starting a YouTube channel uh, to go through the rest of her fight, uh, starting at, you know, at, at Duke University Hospital. So. Uh, beautiful piece this morning. It was Isabella's idea to come forward. And there's another little thing that's really sweet in there. She's got a twin sister, Sophia. And that uh, is something about twins, you know. And when, when, when one half is struggling and, and needs to be picked up, the other half, you know, tends to do that. So she's got these little blessings in her life. And uh, Michael, they came forward this morning. It's a very beautiful thing. This is this is one of those situations where uh, I know you're a girl dad. I'm a girl dad, and I have twins as well. But it really puts life into perspective, oh. and it's it's much bigger than oh. the the jobs that Michael Strahan has. But uh, I know that he is getting strength yeah. from a lot of people like yourself too. And, and hang in there. I know you're very close to him, and uh, I do appreciate you sharing that and sharing that update. And we will continue to follow Isabella's fight. Uh, There's an important note here, Brandon, very, very important note here, and that is that uh, I did take about $700 from him on the golf course. I did not, I did not return it, given the circuit. I said, Michael, I'm still going to take your money as I thumped him on the golf course. But that, I just want to put that in there. I, no, I do appreciate <laughs> that, man. Thank you so much. Hey, look, um, it, it, it's, uh, I got to ask you this because, um, I mean, we can say we can talk about Michael. We can talk about fool me once. Uh, we can also talk about. Yeah, do you know this? Go ahead. Okay. Uh oh, am I in trouble? No, I no, was no. going to say, do you know the expression? Finish it for me. Fool me once. Shame it's on so me. Hard. No, no, no. Oh, oh no. Um, yeah. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Right? Did I get that right? <laughs> That's it. It's the worst one. No one buffed it. No one muffed it worse than George W. Bush. Right. He did famously, God, fool me what? Oh, man. Fool me. You uh, can't get fooled gets again, right? It, yeah. We got a reporter for, for Extra for many years, a guy named Mark Wright. Uh, who co he's British, covered l lots of UK stuff, but comes in and does a lot of things for us, has for several years. That's his wife, Michelle Keegan, who is the star oh. of Fool Me Once on Netflix, which has blown up. She's number one on the call sheet. She's in this with Richard Armitage, Joanna Lumley, who are two major UK uh, talents. Anyway, that's her. She's absolutely beautiful and a tremendous actress. So we kind of feel like uh, part of the extra family is trending number one on Netflix right now. And I'm interviewing her tonight on, on the show. She's really cool and funny. Look, I know we got the, these Emmys coming up, but I really want to get to, I want to ask you a, a real question here, because we out here in Detroit okay. have been waiting for Matthew Stafford to come to Ford Field oh. for what's felt oh. like forever, but it's really, you know, for a week now. What, oh. what is the feeling out there with Matt Stafford and the Rams, and, and how are people feeling in L.A. about this game against Detroit? I wonder how people are feeling in Detroit because that's the, you know, they got a lot of love for Matthew Stafford. I'll never forget that game right. against Dallas when he just pulled the last minute and then he jumped over the, before anyone knew what was going on, he jumped into the end zone. It's one of the great plays of all time. But Stafford is rolling out there against Jared Goff. By the way, both guys members of the same golf club where I play with Strahan and the whole thing. So those guys are always around. Yeah. Love to name drop, sorry. That's those guys, good. they play golf together. There's a real tete-a-tete -tete right there between Goff and Stafford. They're good buddies and they're coming in. There's so much old love. This is a dramatic game. It's the game of the week. I mean, I know what you want. A great performance by Stafford and a victory 
for Detroit. Of course, of course. And everybody here, it, look, we, we all love Matthew Stafford. We just, we're not going to love him from 8.30 until about midnight on uh, Sunday right. night. You shouldn't. Yeah. He's a dangerous, dangerous man. But Jared Goff has had an amazing season. I really love that guy at quarterback. They're both great. This is going to be unbelievable. I'll say it this, though. Because of the game, I'm going to ask you this. Who's got it better than us? Nobody. <laughs> hey, Billy, man, it is always a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you to you. Uh, enjoy Sunday night's game. We'll keep praying for you and Michael and everyone out there. And... Uh, We'll see you next week, and enjoy your weekend. Okay, babe. Bye, man. Love you. See you. Love you too, man. Uh, you can catch Extra weekdays, 2.30, 7.30 here on Fox 2. We're going to be right back. Morning still coming to an end. You can see that. Uh, things are getting a little bit more uh, thin. They're getting thinner uh, when it comes to the overall precipitation. But as we move into tomorrow, it's going to be a different story, guys. We've got some more uh, snow coming and some heavier snow coming as we head through Friday afternoon, Friday evening, before switching over into some rain Friday night. There's today, 38 degrees. As far as your Friday snow goes, look at these gigantic totals off in northern Michigan. But for us, a little bit more manageable. It's due to some warmer air coming in. We've been talking about that all morning long. We'll continue to do so on the news. Guys, back over to you. Thank you, Derek. Well, uh, trending today. Forget those super slim screens. There's something new in TV technology. So it's basically no screen at all. So I want you to check out this TV here. It is made by LG, and when it's not on, you can see right through it. Well, LG says that getting rid of the big black rectangle makes the whole room feel bigger. So the 4K LED screen measures 77 inches, and when it is not used as a TV, it can take on the appearance of a fish tank, a swirling fire, or some sort of digital art. LG hasn't yet said how much it will cost, but I can imagine it is going to be pretty pricey. You can put your high heels there? You can do whatever you want. Okay. What up? This is a new world, Amy. Yes, it is. This is a new world. All right. Well, thanks for being with us in this world. There's so much more to come here on Fox 2. That's right. This is Lou and Lee Thomas. They are coming up on the noon. So if I told you, well, no, we're just going to head over to the show. Oh, yeah. So if I, if I told you, you could get a 77-inch TV and it's not going to look anything like a, like a TV, would you buy it? Or well, you, all the way up until you said the buy it part, I thought you were going to give me yeah, one. I and like I was going to be like, new? yes, Brandon, I will take yes, that. Yes, Brandon, But thank if you. I'm buying it, it's probably really expensive yeah. and it's going to be a I no. I don't care that enough, uh, no. enough about technology. No, no, no. We, don't, no. we don't care that much. So no. all that to say, if it's free, yes. If it's not, no. <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll see in about five, six years. Uh, yeah, change. I'll uh, buy we'll one see. then. Good yeah. man. See, you know how I roll. Uh, there you go. Yeah. We're Have rolling into the tune now. Thanks, guys. guys.